Coming up on today's show, Tesla turns a profit for the first time in three years, Mini unveils the Countryman SE4 all plug-in hybrid, and a truck delivers beer all by itself. These stories and more next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is only possible thanks to the kind donations of viewers like you. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash transport evolved to find out how you can make your own donation today to keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, October 28, 2016. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and we're starting today's show with the news that Tesla Motors, as promised, released its third quarter financials midweek, showing a very good third quarter, turning a profit for the first time in three years. The profit, an impressive $22 million, was made possible by a record quarter for Tesla in terms of vehicle production and sales, as well as a continued improvements in operational efficiency and money management. More impressive is the news that Tesla's profit was possible even though it reduced its debts by $178 million and converted $422 million of its 2018 convertible notes to cash. Looking forward, Tesla says it will soon begin to install the plant machinery required for Model 3 production into its Fremont factory, and it's also hopeful that the Tesla Solar City merger will go ahead as planned next month. And although we can't cover it because it's happening tonight, Tesla's joint product reveal with Solar City of the new Powerwall 2.0 and Solar Roof should at least keep its interest in the company up. We'll have to wait until the next quarter to see if that translates to continued profit or not. For as long as we can remember, Japanese automaker Honda has been one of the most vocal supporters of hydrogen fuel cell technology, producing a number of prototype and limited production fuel cell cars over the past decade or so as part of its roadmap towards hydrogen fuel cell production cars. And this week, we learned that the first production fuel cell car, the 2017 Honda Clarity Fuel Cell Sedan, has been given an official EPA rating that places it at the top of the hydrogen fuel cell charts, both in terms of range per fill and fuel efficiency. As we reported on Monday, the five-seat FCV manages an EPA-approved 366 miles per fill of its twin hydrogen fuel tanks at a fuel economy equivalent of 68 mpge, beating both the Toyota Mirai FCV and Hyundai Tucson FCV in the fuel cell marketplace. But don't get too excited about owning one. At $60,000 each, they won't be cheap, and you'll need to convince Honda you live within easy reach of one of California's hydrogen filling stations in order to even be considered a potential customer. Or in other words, for now, it's a super niche market car that you can't drive out of the Bay Area or Los Angeles. Sorry. Ever since the Tesla Model 3 was officially unveiled in March this year, we've seen a steady increase in pre-reservations for the mass market car. But while Tesla now has more than $700 million in reservations from potential Model 3 customers, Tesla CEO Elon Musk admitted this week that Tesla store staff are doing just what other car dealerships do, upselling customers to a more expensive model. In this case, of course, the upsell is in the form of the Model S, a car that you can order today and, depending on specification, pick up reasonably quickly. The reason? Well, Tesla's already sold out of its 2017 Model 3 allocation and would rather you get behind the wheel of a Model S today than make you wait upwards of 18 months, or maybe even two years, for a Model 3. It's a win-win scenario. In fact, during the investor call following the release of Tesla's Q3 financials, Elon Musk joked that it meant that Tesla staff were anti-selling Model 3. But while Tesla is converting some of its customers to Model S and Model X, it's still quite a price increase that not everyone can afford. If you're watching this show, the chances are you're already aware of the financial savings that can be made in the long term by owning and operating an electric car rather than an internal combustion engined one. But this week, a new study was published which showed that the savings from owning and operating an electric car aren't just personal, they're community-wide. How much? Well, according to a new report published by the American Lung Association called Clean Air Future – Health and Climate Benefits of Zero Emission Vehicles, we can see upwards of $30 billion saved in the US alone if 65% of all cars on the road were zero emission. Yes, I said $30 billion, saved primarily from all of those sick days, hospital visits, and expensive treatments currently affecting hundreds of thousands of Americans every year as a consequence of poor air quality. 
So next time someone tells you electric cars are expensive, quietly ask them what the price of good health really is. If, like me, you spend a fair bit of time on the road as part of your job, you'll be no stranger to the concept of hauling up at a roadside cafe with your laptop trying to get that report filed or bit of work finished before you make your next appointment. And if you drive an EV, the chances are you use every recharging stop as a chance to catch up on work. Well, this week, Nissan unveiled the next logical step in that process, a fully functioning mobile office based on the Nissan eNV200 electric minivan, complete with touchscreen computer, pull-out desk, kitchen space, and of course, all important coffee machine. The whole thing runs off the car's built-in battery pack and, says Nissan, it could be used to let people work wherever they happen to be. Of course, this is the latest in a long line of marketing gimmicks involving Nissan's versatile plug-in van, but nevertheless, I'd be tempted to use something like this, if only it had a really fast internet connection. As the US's most trusted review organization, getting approval of consumer reports for your product is a big deal. Conversely, getting criticized by the same independent consumer association is bad news for your product. And this week, Consumer Reports continued its criticism of Tesla, a company it once had only good things to say about, by publishing its annual reliability report that ranks Tesla as being 25th out of 29 in terms of reliability. While Model S electric cars have actually improved in their reliability over the past year, Tesla's Model X electric car and those notorious Falcon Wing doors have caused the company to languish near the bottom of the reliability index. In response, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said that Tesla has now dramatically improved the reliability of Model X, but we know that it will take a while before that's reflected in reports. For now then, at least, Tesla's not the most reliable car company out there. And with repair times still pretty large for those in heavily populated areas, be prepared for a wait if something does go wrong. Just a few weeks after it released teaser images of a camouflage plug-in hybrid mini being put through its paces in the UK, German automaker BMW has announced the 2017 Mini Countryman SE All-4 plug-in hybrid, the first mini to have a plug since the limited production Mini E electric prototype of the late noughties. Combining a 1.5-litre three-cylinder engine with six-speed automatic transmission up front and an electric motor at the rear, the plug-in hybrid Mini is technically a through-the-road hybrid, with only an electrical connection between front and rear drivetrains. In terms of range, BMW says that the plug-in hybrid will manage around 24 miles, 40 kilometers, on the NEDC test cycle in electric mode before its gasoline engine kicks in, thanks to its 7.6 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. But because the European test cycle is notoriously optimistic, you should expect a real world range of about two thirds of that figure in the real world. In other words, it's most certainly a gas car with a short EV range, not the other way around. Last week, we brought you the news that Faraday Future was readying itself to unveil its first production electric car at CES 2017, a year after it unveiled that weird single-seat concept car that will never make it into production. Well, this week, we heard the news that Faraday Future may be taking its own sweet time to pay one of its biggest contractors to be working on its new production facility north of Reno, Nevada with the allegations that it's more than $21 million behind in payments, with bills of another $25 million due by the end of next month. Issuing a statement later in the week to Automotive News, Faraday Future and the contractor in question, AECOM, said their working relationship was strong, but that doesn't address the letter allegedly sent to Faraday Futures earlier this month by an AECOM exec warning the company to pay up or face stopped construction work. Given this isn't the first time we've heard of rumors of the company not paying bills, I've got to admit to being a little worried about just what we're going to see in the future from the company which still has to show us a car will one be able to drive. It's taken more than a year since the story originally broke, but this week the final steps were being made in the Dieselgate scandal after every single affected owner opted to have their car bought back by Volkswagen in a monumental court settlement.
As part of that settlement, alongside buying back all those effective cars, Volkswagen will have to set aside $2 billion of its own money to promote the use of zero-emission electric cars and support them using its own charging network. But, say numerous automakers and charging network providers, that could give Volkswagen an unfair advantage in the marketplace looking forward, as it could use that $2 billion to create its own monopoly on EV charging. Others, like Nissan, disagree, saying it doesn't mind if Volkswagen builds its own network as long as it benefits all makers and all types of electric car. It's all a little complicated, but let's just say this one could rumble along for many months to come. But do you think it's fair that Volkswagen gets to build its own $2 billion charging network as punishment for cheating in Dieselgate? Or is it just giving a competitive edge? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. We may have only just seen it debut as a concept car, but Mercedes-Benz has already decided that the EQ electric car, the first long-range all-electric model it plans to build on its own using in-house parts, will be going on sale sometime before 2020. At least that's what it announced this week, along with the promise that it will not only bring a first mass-produced long-range EV to market within the next three and a bit years, but that it will be made in Bremen, Germany. Naturally, BMW and Tesla are prime targets for Mercedes-Benz to beat in the premium electric car marketplace, both in terms of autonomous vehicle technology, as well as performance, price, and premium features. But with no news yet on pricing, things are still very much up in the air. And until Mercedes-Benz decides to give us more information, there's really very little else we can say on the subject right now. And finally, earlier this year, we told you about Otto, a new startup aiming to bring autonomous vehicle technology to the world of trucking. Recently acquired by Uber, the company has been pretty busy in the last few months, refining and testing its fully autonomous trucks on various highways throughout the US. Well, this week, its hard work paid off when Otto became the first company in the world to use autonomous vehicle technology to deliver freight to a customer in Colorado, relying on its autonomous vehicle tech to drive the 120 miles from the Budweiser brewery to a local customer, all without needing anyone behind the wheel. Okay, the truck had a pretty big escort, comprising several local police and auto employees in lead and chase vehicles. But the whole thing shows that the world of fully autonomous freight delivery isn't all that far away. We live in interesting times. No, wait, we're living in the future. <laughs> Talking of the future, you're going to have to wait until next week for more TE news because that's your lot for today. As always, thanks for joining me. Please don't forget to leave your reactions and thoughts to the stories we covered in the comments below, as well as giving us a thumbs up and a share if you liked it. And if you didn't, give us a thumbs down and tell us why, because otherwise we can't improve. Don't forget that you can follow us on Twitter at Transport Evolve. You can read our past and current articles at transportevolve.com or check out our YouTube channel for our latest video updates, including one from our staff RAV4EV. As always, and if you liked what you saw today, please consider keeping us independent and impartial by supporting our Patreon crowdfunding campaign from as little as just $1 per month over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. We're just tipping the scales now at $1,100 per month, which after expenses becomes my sole salary. So I'm very appreciative of your help. Can't donate? Don't worry. Just spread the word, retweet our posts on Twitter, and make sure you tell your friends about our YouTube channel and our site. As always, I'll try to be back next week with another roundup of the latest Transport Evolved news. So all that's left for me to say is I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a fantastic weekend, a great Halloween, and until next time, keep evolving. Yeah.